all right guys wes here welcome back to the channel and today we have some big updates regarding zelda tears of the kingdom and with just under two months left until the launch date of the game many fans are expecting nintendo to give us a zelda direct as a way to kind of put a finish to the game's marketing this is of course after concerns in the community on whether or not tears of the kingdom will just be a big dlc rather than a worthy successor to the critically acclaimed zelda breath of the wild along with that nintendo of america president doug bowser recently spoke out about the reasoning for the price hike on the upcoming zelda game and i actually have a theory on a secret reason that i think nintendo increase the price that is besides the obvious of them knowing that we will spend more money on it but rather how nintendo plans to give you more value out of the game at the 70 dollars price tag so be sure to stick around until later in the video because you guys do not want to miss it and spoiler i think it has to do with the highly rumored upgraded nintendo switch console also real quick guys i'm giving away a playstation 5 for 110,000 subscribers if you guys would like to enter all you have to do is subscribe to my channel comment your twitter handle and then tweet me proof that you're subscribed and that will enter you for a chance to win now with zelda tears of the kingdom really releasing in just under two months on May 12th, 2023. And no, I'm not counting down. It's not 55 days and 21 hours at the recording of this video. Anyway, the marketing has been a bit less than we were all expecting it to be. This has many fans speculating on if Nintendo will be releasing a Zelda Direct presentation with the goal of showing off the new game. Now, it was recently announced that Zelda will not be at PAX East, which is typically when I expected to see the first glimpse of actual gameplay. I'll be talking about Zelda's absence from PAX East in a bit, but the reality is the marketing for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom hasn't been as substantial as we were all hoping it to be. We haven't seen any real gameplay outside of the small snippets from the trailers that don't feature the HUD or menus or just anything that games typically reveal. This of course isn't out of the norm as Nintendo likes to keep things extremely secretive on their projects, especially whenever it comes to showing raw footage. They do this in the hopes of giving people a fresh experience and consumers are typically more inclined to go out and buy the game themselves so they can experience and uncover the game's mysteries. So let's say that Nintendo decides to do a Zelda Focus Direct while the gameplay and footage that they show off will be heavily stripped down like they've done in the trailers and that's one of the reasons why i don't think that it makes sense for them to do an entire direct focused on tears of the kingdom i think nintendo's best bet is to give us one final launch trailer one that shows off new features and different areas we will get to explore and of course announces the highly rumored collector's edition nintendo switch nintendo's marketing of tears of the kingdom thus far has been limited to just a few areas so i think giving us a couple extra shots should be plenty sufficient when it comes to the date of a potential zelda direct it's hard saying but if we look at what nintendo has done in the past for other new game directs and releases it's typically done about a month before the game actually launches so tears of the kingdom released in may 12th a direct happening around the middle of april would align with what they've previously done nintendo can be one of the most unpredictable companies in the world so the harsh reality is whether we want to direct or not is simply all up to the nintendo gods to decide now for me personally i'm fine if we don't get a new direct and even a launch trailer at that as i've seen plenty enough of the game to justify the 70 dollars price tag zelda tears of the kingdom is going to be a giant game game if we take a look at just the official footage released by Nintendo if you take a chance to just dive deep into every scene and just study them all a bit it will uncover a massive video game filled with more story locations and secrets to discover than its predecessor at this point the Zelda team has put more time into Tears of the Kingdom than they have with Breath of the Wild and every other Zelda game to date it is truly a massive undertaking building onto an already perfect world is also not easy but everything is looking like they pulled it off from new enemies to new weapons mysterious sky islands Islands, to the curious depths below Hyrule and insane new mechanics, I have no doubt that it will be worth every penny. And speaking of the price tag, Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser discussed the reasoning for the increased price of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in a recent interview with the Associated Press. Now, when asked about the increase from $60 to $70, he stated, when we look at what the game has to offer, I think fans will find that this is an incredibly full, deeply immersive experience. The price point reflects the type of experience that fans can expect when it comes to playing this particular game. This isn't a price point that we will necessarily have on all of our titles it's actually a fairly common pricing model either here or in Europe or other parts of the world where the pricing may vary depending on the game itself Nintendo previously confirmed that the price range of games will be on a case-by-case -case basis he then further clarifies that in this interview so it's not expected that $70 will be the pricing model for all future first-party games which I think is a good thing and Nintendo set the price of Zelda for a few reasons the obvious being the market dictates the price to put that in basic terms they're making it $70 because they know that people will spend 70 bucks over the last few years we saw a shift in the price of games starting with ea increasing the price to 70 sony and microsoft following suit and now nintendo the way xbox and playstation justified the price hike is with the jump to the next generation consoles with zelda tears of the kingdom technically being on previous generation hardware the jump in price is strange to say the least but what if i told you the reason that they are potentially starting with zelda at the 70 dollars price tag is due to nintendo's secret jump to a new or rather mid-generation nintendo switch 
Switch. The highly rumored Nintendo Switch 2 is set to feature graphical upgrades with its new SoC and is allegedly going to be revealed sometime this year with a release date in 2024. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom being $70 could likely be due to it being the first game that will have an enhanced version on the Nintendo Switch 2. Maybe Nintendo's original plan was to have the next Switch release alongside Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but due to the global situation and chip shortage, they had to push things back. So rather than delaying Tears of the Kingdom, they pushed it live on the current generation at the $70 price tag. If you take a look at how PlayStation and Xbox handles cross-gen titles, Nintendo might adopt the model of releasing upgrades of games to the new system for a small price. For instance, if you own Zelda Tears of the Kingdom on the current Switch, it will receive a free enhanced version on the new Switch. Now, if they decide to adopt that model, I would hope that that means lowering the price of the game on the current hardware, but that likely won't happen. As Nintendo knows, people are ready and willing to spend 70 on Tears of the Kingdom, as well as pretty much any other mainline Nintendo game. Regardless though, if spending 70 bucks means we get an enhanced version of Tears of the Kingdom on a, let's say, new Switch, it would easily warrant the increased price. This might just be me coping, and it probably is, but only time will tell. Knowing our luck, Nintendo will charge 70 for the game, and then if you want an enhanced version, you'll need Nintendo Switch Online. Now let's talk about some unfortunate news, especially for those of you that had planned on attending the upcoming PAX event, and basically whether or not we will get a Tears of the Kingdom demo at PAX East. And the answer is no, we won't be getting a demo. Yes, Nintendo will be at PAX East, unlike with Breath of the Wild, there will not be a playable demo of Tears of the Kingdom at that event. So while that's super disappointing news for some, at least there won't be any FOMO for not attending the event. And if we're going to be honest, now that we know that Zelda is not going to PAX, things are even more up in the air about whether or not we will see any gameplay that's actually like raw footage before the game's release. Next up, we just got some news about the highly rumored upgraded Nintendo Switch 2. According to a recent statement with Doug Bowser, when asked about when we will see a new Nintendo Switch, he stated that it's exciting to see the demand is still there, so nothing to announce on any future console or device, but we are still feeling very bullish about Nintendo Switch. When asked about what he would like to see in a new Nintendo Switch, he stated, I should be careful about what I personally would like to see, but what I can share is that one of the reasons that even going into year seven, we feel very confident that the Switch can have a strong performance over the next few years, as it's still that truly unique device that you could play in a variety of ways at home or on the go. From the previous rumors, it was stated by insiders that Nintendo will reveal a new Nintendo Switch this year and release it sometime in 2024. This would obviously be incredible and would allow Nintendo to essentially double dip the hype of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If the rumors that Nintendo will be upgrading current Switch games to the new Switch, announcing a visual upgrade for Tears of the Kingdom will be a great reason for people to go out and buy the new Switch. But there has also been some recent concerns that were raised regarding backwards compatibility between the current Switch and the new one, which I will say this. There is almost zero doubt that the upgraded Switch will be compatible with the current generation Switch titles. With the jump from Tegra X1 to Tegra X2 allegedly, it's possible that compatibility will be a bit tougher to achieve. But if anything, I would say that it's in Nvidia's best interest to make sure that the previous Switch games will work on the new Tegra X2 SoC. Overall, there's just no way that Nintendo is going to release a mid-generation Nintendo Switch or even a Nintendo Switch 2 and not have those games cross-platform. Nintendo will not abandon this current platform for a while, maybe for their truly next-generation console, but for this new Switch, it's mainly going to be a mid-generation refresh, kind of like the PS4 Pro or whatever PlayStation decides to do for their mid-generation console. Going back to the previous price tag discussion, overall, am I upset that Nintendo is raising the price for a Switch game? Yeah, it's unfortunate, but let's be honest, I will pay more than 70 bucks for Tears of the Kingdom. I'm actually actively trying to find the collector's edition as it's currently sold out everywhere, but I just don't want this to be a trend that they follow in the future. I'm fine with some big games like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom being 70 bucks, but other games that are ports, I would rather have like 40 bucks. Similar to Metroid Prime Remastered being $39.99, I just don't want them to get in the habit of releasing every new Switch game for 70 bucks when the experience that they provide is really only worth 60 bucks. There's also the reality of the cost of living as well as inflation and the fact that games have just really not gone up in price in a while. Almost like 20 years, it's been a $60 price tag. So if adopting the $70 price tag means that Nintendo is going to be able to continue to deliver massive experiences like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and what they did with Breath of the Wild, then an extra $10 is a small price to pay for those truly great experiences. Definitely curious what your thoughts are. Do you think that 70 bucks is justified for Tears of the Kingdom? Has Nintendo shown you enough? Or would you like Nintendo to do a Zelda Direct as one last way of trying to win you over? Let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to take advantage of the PS5 giveaway as well. I'll be giving away a PlayStation 5 and a game copy of your choice to enter. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment your Twitter handle, tweet me proof that you're subscribed, and then the winner will be announced at 110k. I've also got some bonus entries in the pinned comment. Also, I apologize how I sound. I'm a bit under the weather. I think I'm on the end of it, so the next upload you watch, I should be sounding perfectly fine. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. This has been Wes, and I will talk to you guys.
guys in the next video.